Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I want to go over a few practice questions looking at the hydrohalogenation of dienes. So grab your cup of coffee and notebook to work through these examples with me, hit that like button for good luck on the test, and let's get started. So here is my first example, and the first thing that I am going to do, I will redraw this molecule so I can work through the mechanism. And the mechanism here is going to start just like we would expect with the electrophilic attack, so the electrons from the double bond go onto the proton, then the electrons between the hydrogen and bromine go onto the bromine, and that's going to give me my first carbocation. In this case, I'm going to opt for the allylic carbocation right away, and here I'm going to have the hydrogen attached to my carbon at the edge of the molecule like that, although I don't need to show this hydrogen, so I'm going to get rid of it for right now. Now, the next thing with those allylic systems is always going to be to mind our resonance. Never forget about the resonance structures here. So I'm going to draw that I have this resonance contributor, and I also have another resonance contributor, which is going to look like this. Now, we can have our nucleophilic attack from our Br-, so I'm going to say that my Br- can attack either this carbocationic position, or we can attack that carbocationic position. In the first case, we are going to end up with a product that looks like this, and in the second case, my product will have the following structure. Now, the one on the left, that one we are going to call a 1-2 product right away, because if my hydrogen attached to this position over here, and I number my molecule from that position, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, uh, the hydrogen is at the carbon number 1, bromine is at the carbon number 2 over here, so that is my 1-2 product. And I'm also going to call that a kinetic product right away, because we know that the kinetic product is always going to be a 1-2 product. Now, the one on the right side, that one is my 1-4 product. And let's see if that one is going to be a thermodynamic product or not. If I look at the substitution pattern of my double bond, on the left left side, I'm seeing that my double bond is connected to two different carbons. On the right side for my 1,4 product, my double bond is connected to four different uh, carbons, which means that that one is going to be indeed our thermodynamic product, which means that if I were to do this reaction at low temperature, I would favor the 1,2 kinetic product in this case. However, if I were to do this reaction at high temperature, then I would favor the formation of 1,4 product, the thermodynamic product in this particular case. Okay, moving on to the next example, I have a molecule like this. The problem with molecules like this one is that this is a non-symmetrical diene, which means that we first need to do the analysis which double bond we are going to attack. So let's call our double bonds as a double bond A and a double bond B. First, I'm going to redraw my molecule, and let's say I first pay attention to my double bond A. So I'm going to take that one and I will react that with my HBr. The curved arrows for that is going to look like this, making the corresponding secondary allylic carbocation. Remember that we always want to opt for the allylic carbocation, uh, even if we have a tertiary carbocation possibility, like in this case. I am also going to have another resonance contributor looking like this. But before I go ahead and predict my final products here, I want to analyze the resonance contributors that I would get by protonating the double bond B and see if those might be better. To do so, I'm going to restart my analysis by redrawing my molecule, like so. Now I'm going to do this reaction again, but with the double bond B, which would give me the following allylic carbocation, and of course I can draw resonance structure for that one as well, which is going to look like this. Now the important part here is to analyze our resonance structures and see which of the two possible combinations is a better one. So for the resonance structures A, I have a secondary and I have a primary contributors. For the resonance structures B, I have a secondary and I have a 
tertiary contributor, which means that the second combination is actually much better. So that means that that carbocation, the carbocation uh, from the uh, double bond B, is going to be formed, while the other one from uh, double bond A is not going to be formed. So I'm going to cross out reaction A, and I'm going to continue with my reaction B for the further analysis and predicting my final products. Doing the nucleophilic attack on each of my resonance contributors going to give me the following two possible products. The one on the left is going to be our 1-2 product, which is going to be automatically our kinetic product, and the one on the right is going to be our 1-4 product. Now, my usual analysis to establish which one is going to be more stable, going to show me that on the left I have a double bond connected to three atoms, while the double bond on the right side is connected to two non-hydrogen atoms, which means that the molecule on the left is actually more stable than the one on the right, so in this case our 1-2 product is going to be kinetic and it's also going to be the thermodynamic product as well. So for the reaction like this, it doesn't matter how I do this reaction, I can do it at high temperature, I can do it at low temperature, regardless, my major product is always going to be a 1-2 product in this particular case. So remember, whenever you have a non-symmetrical diene like what I have over here, you always need to first start by doing the carbocation analysis, draw both the possible resonance contributors that you are going to have by attacking one bond and the other bond, compare those resonance contributors, choose which one is going to be overall more stable, and go with that pair for your final products. Don't just jump with the first double bond that looks at you because you might very well be uh, in the incorrect path and just get the incorrect product. Always do the analysis first and then proceed with the prediction of your final products. Alright, so the next example seems relatively straightforward. We don't have anything tricky here. The molecule is perfectly symmetrical in that sense, so it doesn't matter which double bond we are going to use. So I'm going to start by redrawing my molecule, like so, and then we are going to go into our mechanism by taking the double bond, using that as a nucleophile to grab the proton, electrons go to iodine, giving me the allylic carbocation looking like this, and of course here, like in all the previous examples, I'm going to be able to draw the resonance structure for it, looking like this. Then, from this point on, when we have our resonance structures, we are going to go on with our nucleophile attack. In this case, nucleophile is going to be iodine, so I'm going to say that my iodine attacks either here or my iodine attacks over there, giving me the corresponding final products that look like this. Now, the one on the left, that one is going to be our 1-2 product, which is the kinetic one. The one on the right is going to be our 1-4 product. Looking at the position of my double bond and looking at the um, atoms connected to my double bond, on the left I see 1, 2, 3 atoms connected to my double bond. On the right I'm seeing 1, two different groups connected to my double bond, so in this case, again, my um, double bond on the left is going to be more stable, which means that that is both kinetic and that is a thermodynamic product again. So in this case, like in the previous example, it doesn't matter how I do this reaction, either I do it at high temperature or low temperature, in both cases my major product is going to be my 1-2 product here. Now, for my last example, I have a very symmetrical molecule again, I have a plane of symmetry going right through the middle of my molecule like this, which means that I don't have to analyze which double bond to use, I can grab either double bond and go with that right away. So, first I'm going to redraw my molecule, and I'm going going to use my bottom double bond over here as a nucleophile, as I've mentioned it doesn't matter which one you're going to use, here it's completely irrelevant. So that gives me my tertiary allylic carbocation, and like always we are going to draw the other resonance structure for that as well, looking like this. Now the next step is going to be our nucleophilic attack, so I have my Br- that can either attack this resonance contributor, or I can have my Br- attacking right over here. In the first case I'm going to get a product that looks like this, and in the second case I'm going to have the following structure for my final product. So the one on the left, that is my 1-2 product, and that is going to be our kinetic product right away. The one on the right is going to be 1-4 product, so now 
As per usual, we are going to do the analysis of our double bond, and what I'm seeing on the left side, my double bond is connected to one, two, three different atoms. The one on the right side, however, is connected to one, two, three, four different groups, which means that in this case, the double bond on the right, the one, four product, is more thermodynamically stable, which means that that one is going to be our thermodynamic product. So here, if I did this reaction at low temperature, then I would get one, two as the major product. However, if I were to do this reaction at the high temperature, then one, four, would be my major product in this case. So what do you guys think about these types of reactions? Do you feel comfortable with the electrophilic addition to dienes now? Or do you think you need a little bit more practice? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I especially want to thank all Organic Chemistry Tutor members for your support and encouragement. You guys are awesome and these videos wouldn't be possible without your help and support. If you learned something new today, hit the like button and share this video with your friends so that more students can see these tutorials. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this awesome video next and I will see you tomorrow.